So, wouldn't hurt that paper out. Today, we're going to cover mass to mass and percent yield. This will help you get your lab finished up. And I'm going to be using a, one of the examples in the lab. All right. So, mass to mass stoichiometry calculations. What I want to first do is some review. Mole to mole is the simplest one. And what you start with is the number of moles of what you know times the mole ratio will give you the number of moles of unknown. Now, guys, this is stuff we've gone over already. Um, mole to mass, you start out as a mole to mole problem. This and this looks exactly the same as this and this. Where it changes to get mass, you're going to multiply by um, let's go green. By the molar mass. All right. So, right here, you have your mole to mole. We've extended it now to add molar mass, and that gives you grams of unknown. And then finally, mass to mole. We're going backwards at this point. You start with the number of grams you know, divide by or multiply by the inverse of the molar mass times the mole ratio, puts us at moles. But what we're going to do today is put it all together. All right. And I will upload this. Um, PowerPoint to the agenda folder. Now, what do these all have in common? They all have mole ratio in common, and that was a poor color to use for circling things. So, mole ratio, mole ratio, mole ratio. That's key to all of these problems. All right. I'm going to sit now. Keep moving here. Things. Things that you will always know or can find. Can be determined our mole ratio and molar mass. You can always find these two. These will always be available to you as you do these problems. So you're always just looking for one thing. And this is the word determined. So, are we ready to move forward? Let me hit pause. Next. Here's what we're going to do. Mass to mass. This is new. The first thing you always have to do is write and balance the chemical equation. Then, determine your knowns. All right. Did, what do you know about the problem? And that usually has a number attached to it, but it also includes the molar masses of both the known and unknown and the mole ratio. Then, you determine the unknown. 
What are you looking for? Then you solve the problem. Guys, so in a mass to mass, you start with grams of unknown. You divide or by the molar mass or multiply by its inverse of the known. Multiply by the ra ra mole ratio. That's the swinging door that gets you from one side of the problem to the other. And then multiply by the molar mass of the unknown and you find out the grams of what's going to happen. And this is what you needed to do for your lab. And so the example I'm going to use here comes right out of your lab. So you might want to write this down when we get there. So up is the example that we started the other day but didn't get done with it. Now, here's the issue, guys. And this is where everybody has issues. It says 10,2 fluoride is used in some toothpaste. It's made by the reaction of tin and hydrogen fluoride. All right, so that's your reaction. How many grams of tin 2 fluoride are produced, so this is the product, from the reaction of 30 grams of hydrogen with tin, hydrogen fluoride? So, issue always is, is writing and balancing the proper chemical equation. Somebody tell me the symbol for tin. It's not obvious. SN. SN. So we start with tin. And we add hydrogen fluoride, HF, which is the same as hydrofluoric acid. And then it says we make tin 2 fluoride. What's the charge on tin then? Tin 2 plus 2. So that means we need two fluorines to balance with it, and we're left with hydrogen gas. So that's what this equation looks like to start with. Is it balanced? Yes. No, how do we balance it? Two here? Okay, next. What do we know? We know that we started with 30 grams of HF. What we're looking for is grams of SNF2. So, we need a few things. We need the molar mass of hydrogen fluoride. That's pretty straightforward. F weighs 19, H is 1, so it would be 20 grams per mole of HF. We need the molar mass of SNF2. How do we figure that out? Somebody on their periodic chart tell me what SN weighs. Okay, we'll call it 118.7 because that's not close enough to round off. And we said, what did I say each fluorine weighs? What's each fluorine weigh? 19. What's 19 times 2? 38. So what's 118 plus 38? 156.7. There we go. So now we are going to solve this. Let me get a new color since we're on the... So, this is a mass to mass. 
We're going to start with our 30 grams of HF. I'm getting rid of the two decimal places just to save space. Now, we want to get rid of the grams of HF and get to moles of HF because we got to get to our mole ratio, which is a swinging door. What did I say one mole of HF weighs? 20. Somebody's paying attention. Now, we want to get rid of moles of HF, so that goes on the bottom. And we want to get to moles of SNF2 because then we can, this is our transition. This gets us from the hydrogen fluoride to the tin fluoride. All right. What's the mole ratio of HF to SNF2? Try again. What's the coefficient in front of SNF? One to two. There we go. Then, to get to grams of SNF2 from moles of SNF2, how much does a mole of SNF2 weigh? We just figured it out before we got down here. Right, 156.7. Now, what units can I cancel out? Somebody. What units can I cancel? One mole SNF2 to got rid of that. What else? Units. What units? Moles of HF. Oh, it'll come back. There we go. And what else can we cancel? Grams. Now, can we simplify any of these numbers as we go along here? Here's what I, you can do this all on your calculator, but you can also simplify it. How many times does 2 go in the 30? 15. How many 5s in 15? How many 5s in 20? There, we simplified it. Now, so your answer is going to be 3 times 156.7 divided by 4. Somebody do that for me. Somebody do it for me. What do you got? 117.5. So, starting with 30 grams of hydrogen fluoride gas, we can make 117.5 grams of tin 2 fluoride. Let me hit the pause. Okay, I'm going to hit play again, and we're going to the next slide. Now, percent yield is pretty straightforward. And this is where the exam, this was one of the things you had to figure out on your lab. And it's a simple calculation. What you actually got divided by what you should have got times 100. All right. The theoretical yield is a calculation you have to make before you do the experiment. Well, in this case, we're doing it after the experiment. So, theoretical yield is what we should get if everything happens perfectly in the lab. But as you knew, found out in that lab, it was pretty hard to be perfect because stuff spit out of your 
beaker, you didn't mix it right, you didn't use the right amount of indicator, so things could go horribly wrong. So, in your lab, you had to do this reaction. Potassium carbonate, that was reaction number one in your lab, reacts with hydrochloric acid to form potassium chloride, carbon dioxide, and water. You should have had this balanced already, correct? Now, what, how do we balance it? Obviously, we need two of these, right? Because we had two car uh, potassiums over here. We got two hydrogens, now we got two chlorines, so that should be the balanced equation. K2CO3 HCl. All right. What we had to figure out is you were going to make potassium chloride. You didn't know how many it was going to do. You were supposed to start, and most of you did, with 0.5 grams of K2CO3, correct? Theoretically. Now, we are trying to figure out the theoretical amount of potassium chloride that this potassium carbonate is going to make. So, what we're going to do is a mass, mass problem. You started with 5 grams of K2CO3. Some of you started with a different amount. You would use that amount. Next, 1 mole of K2CO3 weighs what? So you got potassium, two of them. You got carbon, one of them. And you got oxygen, three of them. Carbon weighs 12. Oxygen weighs 16. What does potassium weigh? 39, we'll make it simple. So we got 78. Add that up, we got 18. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, and four is thirteen. So one mole of potassium carbonate weighs one hundred and thirty eight grams. Then we want to get from moles of K two CO three to moles of KCl. What's the mole ratio between them? Whoop, sorry, messed this up. Put the yeah, let's Yep, I got them on the wrong side. KCl on top, K2CO3 on the bottom. What's the ratio of KCl to K2CO3? 2 to 1. 2 to one. 2 to 1. Then, I need to know what KCl weighs per mole. So, KCl. Potassium, got 1 times 39. Chlorine, I got 1 times 35 and a half. For a total of 74.5. All right. Grams cancel, moles cancel, moles cancel, moles cancel. So, I need one of you to take 0 0.5 times 2 times 74.5 divided by 138. So, 0 0.54. Is this is what this is your theoretical 
yield. This is what you should have got if everything worked perfectly in the lab. So, we come over. We got, and let me make this big, we're going to figure out the theoretical yield. You sh the, oh. Come on. The 0 0.5, was it 5.4? Goes there. That's what you should have gotten. Now, somebody that did 0.5 for their beginning one, tell me what you actually got after you weighed it out. Um, I got 0 0.7. 0 0.7? Yeah. Okay, 0 0.7. Seven. So, somebody take 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.54 times 100. This is the actual amount. 129%. What did you say? Point what? 0.63%. So, you're off by about 29% of what should have happened. But we said that first reaction was your practice one. In reality, this should be at 100%. So you're at 29%. If you did it right, this should have been 0 0.54 divided by 0 0.54 times 100. And your yield would have been 100%. You were over by 29%, which is not bad for the first day.